John here again with my buddy Alan Kay and uh, today we want to talk a little bit uh, just with regards to some knives that we carry uh, every day in the woods in our bags just kind of a rundown of, of what Alan and I look for in blades um, you know Alan and I are both a firm believer that part of your survival really starts with having a blade because it can do so many things for you and it's such a, a useful tool uh, so today we just kind of threw out a smorgasbord of uh, blades that we have from our pockets bags you know things like that so how was everything good how so, you been good 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 so we're up here in the mountains uh al and i are gonna hit the woods here in a little bit and so before we started we thought we would just throw some blades out because uh, we were sitting on the couch talking about blades so kind of kind of where we always end up talking about so um so let's start with the edc blade alan um, you know, everyday carry blade, it's something that you should have on you all the time for mm -hmm. those little tasks, you know, um, but it's the blade that you usually end up using the most. I mm -hmm. mean, I feel like it's a, a part that a lot of people overlook. They always want to go straight to what big fixed blade do you carry in your bag, mm -hmm. where 80% of the time you and I end up using our pocket knife to do a lot of tasks and it's, it's just the one that we carry all the time. So, I mean, what do you look for, you know, in an EDC blade? Well, you know, if I'm going to the woods, everybody knows the first thing I'm going to grab is going to be something like a kukri. Yeah. But they're unwieldy, and uh, you get strange looks walking around town with it. So what I have just like every single day is a Benchmade Griptilian. I've kind of narrowed that down as being my my favorite all-around yeah. blade. Um, you know, for, for what they are, they're really not that expensive. They've got a really good uh, texture on them. Yep which when I look at a knife, I look at it as tool and weapon. And this does both things equally well. You know, having a swell here, having mm -hmm. some texturing, jimping nice here, jimping it's top. gonna keep your hand from running up on the blade. The axis lock from Benchmade is, is really a proven locking mechanism. You're, you're not gonna hurt that thing. Uh, the overall blade profile of this is, yep. is really good. I've done everything in the field with it that you would need, trap triggers, friction fire, you know, uh, processing animals, all of that sort of thing. And overall, it's, it's really, really light. Yeah. Um, so I would say this is the most used knife in my arsenal. It's, it's what I put on every single day. Yeah, and I mean, I've been using almost the same exact knife. This is Benchmade's uh, new uh, bug out knife. I don't know why they called it that, but whatever. Uh, access lock, almost same blade shape. Uh, it's just a lot lighter. They've taken the liners out of the steel liners, um, out of like Allen's Benchmade to cut down the weight a ton on this thing, super lightweight. Uh, I have taken this thing, if you watch our, my review on it, I've batoned, you know, wood that's almost as large as the blade with it. I've, I beat the mess out of this blade and uh, I love the fact that it's super lightweight. Like Alan said, the access lock, I mean, it holds up to anything you can throw at it, but it's still real easy to get out uh, and in if you need to. Um, I've never had a single issue with this. I love, on this blade, I love the deep pocket carry uh, clip that's on it. Just allows the knife to sit a little bit deeper in your pocket. Um, so, I mean, I've been carrying the, the bug out quite a bit. Uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, I, I, this is like one of the first knives, I only have a couple, I think is like a 10 out of 10, you know, um, mm -hmm. as far as just design, overall function. Um, I love the bug out, you know, that's just what I've been going to, to lately. Um, and super enjoy it, you know. And then my other EDC knife that I carry quite often, uh, mostly because I love the wave feature. What the wave is, is this little hook right here, and it catches your pant pocket. So, you know, when you pull this blade out, it catches and it opens the blade. So pretty much just with one tug, you got a blade that's extended, and it's on a lot of Emerson knives. Um, you know, it's a patent thing that Emerson has, but they've given it to Kershaw and Spyderco, so they have some knives like that. But it's real nice, not taking into a life or death situation, but when you got something in your hand you're trying to hold, mm -hmm. it's just nice to be able to just pop that knife out, it blades out, ready to cut. So, you know, I carry, this is the um, the Scallywag, the Emerson Scallywag. I just love the handle, the features on that. So those are my two, my two EDC blades. I just really like the wave feature. That's why I wanted to talk about this knife some. Um, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, when it comes to EDC blade, you know, find something that first of all fits in your pocket. I mean, try to make it lightweight. I see a lot of people, they, 
they buy these big, heavy, robust knives, and then they just don't carry them because they're usually too heavy. Um, you know, so find something that's super lightweight, fits your needs and what you want to do. Um, all right, let's talk about a bag knife. What do you kind of look for? You know, when you when you're building a ruck or, or a bug out bag, something like that. What are, what is a a knife quality that you look for that gives you you know more ability? Well, one of the first ones I like to put in. I've got this uh, this Mora Bushcraft Black. Uh, it's kind of a step up from a folder. Uh, I really like the the texturing on the handle. It's really comfortable. You can work with this thing all day, and you won't get hot spots or blisters. Yet, you know, I mean, for combatives, it, it fits in the hand nicely, and because of that non-slip grip, it works really well. And there's just enough to keep your hand from running up on the blade. Yeah. And, and this is probably one of my favorite blades. I've used it a lot, uh, and I, I designed this little neck sheath for it. You know, sitting around camp, I like having it in a, in a neck sheath. And also the way I've laced it, you know, you can run your belt through these loops and it can be worn here so that I can grab it with one hand, blade mm -hmm. forward in tight quarters, or I can wear it around my neck if, if I want that method of carry. So there's really two different ways I can carry that. That's one of the first things I'll put in the bag. Um, I always carry a little saw. This is a silky that I started carrying. I had a Baco Laplander but this, this silky definitely outperformed it. I mean, it cuts out of proportion to its size. Uh, it's really, really light. And, and you know, knives are sexy and cool and all that, but really you should have a saw with you. You're a lot less likely to injure yourself with a saw. Yeah. Uh, you're tired, your hands are wet, you're under stress, you know, unless you're really adept and practiced at using these edged implements you're, you're probably likely to injure yourself, whereas a saw has, has a lot more uh, safety. And saws are, are more stealthy too. You know, you mm -hmm. can hear somebody hacking on a tree a mile away in the woods, whereas this is, is a lot quieter. So I really like it. And then of course, a kukri. You know, my, my present kukri that I'm carrying is a, uh, a Topps Bushcrafter. And I, I like everything about it, except for the, the blade geometry itself. I think it needs a little more of a flat spot. I would tweak a little bit with the mm -hmm. overall cutting edge, but you know, aside from that, I've carried this thing in about four countries, most recently in Alaska. And you can see here on the edge where I've actually dug with that and some really hard gravel. We were setting up a wall tent and needed to make a depression really mm -hmm. quick. But this is a this is blade, I would say, is indestructible because I've, I've tried to break it. I can't. And, and even right up to the tip, you see how thick that is. And yeah. then all of a sudden it tapers down into a tip. It, the spine on that thing is just massive to get some work done. It, it's like a sharpened crowbar. Mm -hmm. It's like a crowbar with the edge on it. It's just, it's amazing. Uh, and divot for a- uh, Yeah, for it, it's got the bow drill divot, which I use quite a bit. You know, one of the things, if you do uh, want to make a bow drill, one of the hard things to come across can be the, the bearing block or the socket, as some people call it. So, you know, having that already on your knife saves time and it just makes sense. But the handles on this thing, I guess they're micarta, mm -hmm. are just indestructible. Now, now the sheath it came with was lacking, as, as is the case with most knives. It seems like we put a lot of thought into the knife, and then when they make the sheath, they're just like, eh, throw it in that thing. And uh, to me, the sheath is as important yeah. as the knife. It's part of the overall system. That's how I carry it. That's how I'm going to access it, especially under pressure. I don't want straps or flaps or any mm -hmm. buttons to mess with. I just want to grab it and rip it free and go to work with it. And so I had a friend of mine make this Kydex sheath for me uh, that pretty much satisfies those needs. And you know, it, it really performs out of proportion to its size. It, it approaches hatchet and camp ax right. type task uh, in, in a package that I can do with one hand. So I really like it. Like I say, I mean, I don't have it on my belt every day, but mm -hmm. if I know I'm going to the woods, that's one of the first things that I'm gonna grab. Yeah, and, and, and I'll agree with Alan 100%, you know, with regards to, you know, sheaths. Um, uh, I, I prefer Kydex. I know some people are leather lovers, um, it's fine. But, you know, always check the hardware on it also. Um, you know, Alan's got a blade, uh, blade tech, tech lock on this one because the last thing you want is to get into the woods, pull your knife out, break, you know, break the straps or whatever on it. And, mm -hmm. and now you don't have an ability to carry your knife. You're trying to jam it in your pants or your pocket, or you're, yeah. you're throwing it back in your bag. And that's not where you want it to be. 
Um, so, you know, always make sure you, you look for that, you know, in a knife also. Um, you know, I mean, I carry a fixed blade too. This is something we're working on um, right now, making some changes on it. I love that like four, five inch style blade, you mm -hmm. know, we were talking earlier, you know, you get to six, seven, eight inch blade, like they're a little bit nicer for chopping, but they're hard to work with also. And you can get fatigue if you're whittling, mm -hmm. trying to get some, uh, you know, things done, small tasks. Especially in a conventional knife, just something that's kind of a straightish yeah. type edge, you know, I don't see a need for it to be much longer than that. Now, if you're talking Gallux, Bolos, Kukri's, then yeah, you know, you need a little more length because it's more of a specific design. Yeah. And, you know, and I say when it comes to a, a fixed blade, uh, in, in my mind, there's really only two types of handles, materials that I would go, and that's G10 or Micarta. Yeah, Just due agree. to the fact that when they get wet, muddy, bloody, mm -hmm. slippery, you know, th they just seem to hold more traction. Um, they last for pretty much for forever. Um, you know, so always, always kind of look for those two materials, you know, um, anything else you want to say with regards to a fixed blade? Well, you know, with wooden, with wooden grips, eventually they're going to, uh, they're going to crack and break. They, they just are impact fluctuations between really, really moist environments, really, really dry environments, hot, cold. You know, I haven't had a, a wooden gripped knife that hasn't cracked at some point and you end up wrapping duct tape around it. So you might as well go ahead and go with something that's pretty much bomb proof yeah. from the beginning. So, um, all right, let's talk about some self-defense blades with regards to, you know, something you keep on body uh, most of the time. If, if, you know, a situation were to arise, something that you can grab quickly. Um, you usually carry a, a Benchmade uh, SOCP dagger with you, you know. Sometimes. Why, why do you go with that one? Well, that one I actually, like when I'm doing security contracts, I'll, I'll wear it on my body armor just as to have something that I can use as a standoff weapon. It's basically a shank. I mean, I, I really wouldn't do any type of cutting task with it. Yep. It's just something to, to get some distance so that I can transition to something better than a sharp, pokey thing. But, you know, like I said before, when I look at a knife, I look at it through the lens of tool and weapon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this Benchmade Griptilian is my everyday right self-defense blade and it's also my everyday bushcraft blade it does both jobs equally well i feel uh, the same could be said for the um, mora bushcraft black I, it does all of the bushcraft stuff and it's a weapon equally well mm -hmm. same with the kukri i mean they transition from one role to the next but yeah i mean i, I bought this one it's got an assisted opening uh yeah. I bought it one time. I was in need of a knife. I flew in somewhere and decided to travel really light. And I was just going to pick up a knife when I got there. And I wanted another grip Tilly and I was going to mail it back to myself. Uh, but I ended up getting this thing. And I, I really like it. I've used it lots. But the one rule it kind of breaks for me is it's got this locking mechanism on it. So if this thing were to become engaged, then all of a sudden I'm trying to open this knife. It won't open. And you got to break your grip. You got to break your grip to turn this to, yeah. thing on and then make it open. So that for me, actually, I ended up getting it out of the safe today because for that reason, I really don't carry this mm -hmm. one that much. It's more of a backup in case I lose or break one. You know, I've got a couple of rules about knives. One is I don't really like locks on them that will stop them from functioning. Uh, I'd, I'd never have automatic knives because when they break, they're pretty much dead in the yeah. water. Whereas the assisted opening, you know, if that mechanism breaks or becomes damaged, then it's still just a basic so, folder. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is I want no serrated edge on my knife. I want it completely smooth edge where I can sharpen it in the field on a rock if I need to. If I do have a serrated edge with me, it's gonna be something like on a Leatherman where yeah. it's by itself More and a I have a conventional edge. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't have a specific combat knife because how often are you in a knife fight? Right. You know, hopefully never. But, you know, in most people's life, it may happen one or two times. But, uh, you know, yeah. I am going to use my knife for other tasks all yeah. of the time. I, uh, I, clear, I carry this clinch pick with me. Uh, you know, and this sits kind of an appendix carry. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't know which hand to draw a knife with, get some training. Uh, but super small, super uh, convenient, easy to get to. And kind of like Alan said, it's a standoff or, you, you know, a, a close quarter kind of grab. Uh, 
Because if somebody is is within arm reach of you, a firearm isn't usually the the weapon you can go with the quickest. You know, you can get a knife out a whole lot faster, and you can get nine a firearm. out of ten. You're yeah. going to use your hands. Yeah, your hands um, are always the first thing. But this is you know just a it's a clinch pick. I mean, as you can see, super small, and you know, and it's made for just getting and then ripping. It's it's a reverse edge, so the the blades on the top side of it, um, and it's it's a get off me you mm -hmm. know kind of blade. Um, you know, so I, I like that. Uh, Craig Douglas, you know, has, has designed that. I think he did a fantastic job. Uh, this is a knife that I, I got just recently from a custom knife maker um, that we're doing some work on. And this is, as Alan said, a, a weapon, you know, uh, more than it is a, a tool. Um, and this is really made to, to like go in plate carriers and stuff, just so you can rip it up, uh, reverse grip and, and get to it if you had to. Um, you know, it's a, it's a wicked looking blade, um, you know, so there's going to be some more information coming out on, on this yet. It's, it's not yet released, um, but, but that's really what that is, is designed for. Um, or you can do something like this uh, uh, CRKT, um, you know, this is a Ken Onion design and, you know, it's a wicked blade. Um, you know, ha this one actually has a manual lock for the safety on it, so when you engage that, um, there's no way that you can put the blade in pretty much. So, you know, more of a, a self-defense tool as well. Um, so, you know, self-defense, I mean, it, it takes practice, it takes some training, um, but they're just, they're more of a specialty yeah. tool for, for the most part. I think as far as knives go for self-defense, people get wrapped around the axle about combat knives. I want a knife that's already good for all the other stuff I'm gonna be using a knife for most likely. And if I'm used to it and familiar with it, it's going to translate into a weapon pretty yeah. easily. I mean, we don't really need anything specifically designed for a fighting knife. All you need is a sharp thing to hit the soft spots with, yeah. and that could be an ink pen. Yeah. You know, so I, I think sometimes the, the fighting part of the knife gets, gets too much attention, right. whereas we should be looking at all the other task I'm going to be doing with this knife because that's that's the reality of the situation just like in the preparedness world everybody's focused on guns and weapons and self-defense and fighting and retreat security you're going to eat every day hopefully mm -hmm. you're going to drink water every day you're going to have to handle sanitation issues every single day the chances of you fighting slim to none you know and you're not going to go out there and, and use 40,000 rounds of ammunition statistically uh, you know, by the time that happens, you, you're dead already. So I think sometimes you have to reality check yourself and say, all right, I'm more likely to open up my kid's package for a toy they just bought or butter toast with this or make a feather stick than I am actually going to fight off the Mujahideen or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and really when it comes down to yeah. that for edged weapons, skill trumps the gear anyway. Yeah. You know, I can I could do a edged weapons encounter with a all point pen and be as competent as I am with the with the piece of steel. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's let's shift gears a little bit. Multi tools. You know, I feel multi -tool. like yeah. I, I feel like most people forget that a multi tool has a knife on it. Yeah, they see it as a pair of pliers. It's 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 multi tool. That's uh, mine, and I like a sheath with mine because I don't have any type of pocket clip. Yeah. or retention lanyard or any of that kind of thing and it's the old school one you know you can't open the yeah. knife from the outside but but i mean uh feel the edge on that guy it's oh yeah you do heart oh, surgery yeah. with that yeah yeah and i basically just reserve that for like say i lose my primary secondary knife mm -hmm. this is probably my tertiary option mm -hmm. but you know having all the other things on it like the pliers uh the wire cutters things yeah. of that nature are just awesome uh, there's there's so many times where you really need to grab something small and get a good grip on it that you just can't do with your hand yep. and you can't improvise anything for it. Most recently, the the last season of Alone, you saw that uh, you know Carly got the the hook sure. in her hand and had she tried everything under the sun. I felt so bad watching her. You know, but you, it could happen. You get a fish hook in your hand. Yeah. This will enable you to get a hold of that thing and manipulate it, maybe push the barb through where you can then cut it off and retract it or something. Anything is better than, than not having a way to grab things. Yeah. And I've used the wire cutter a lot, yeah. it seems. And, and, you know, the one good thing, I mean, I have a Leatherman mutt here uh, and I've, I've used it quite a bit. 
I, I love the fact that Leatherman has gone to replaceable wire mm -hmm. cutter. You know, you can just simply unscrew them, yeah. uh, put in new cutters, and, and you're good to go again. Because you still um, see a lot of that on the old ones. They're all chewed oh, yeah, up, you yeah. know? Yeah, this one is new enough that it has the replaceable you, you, teeth. You're like, oh, you've cut enough quarter penny nails that mm -hmm. you can't cut quarter penny nails because the blade is wore to that shape now. Yeah. Um, you know, I have this mutt. I took this off of off of one of my belts out of my bag. Um, you know, it's more AR weapon specific. You mm -hmm. know, with regards to you know take down pens, pushing out take down pens, things like is that. Is that a ferro rod on there? No, it's to make oh. push take down pens. But okay. there is a company that makes a ferro rod attachment if you ever want to go that way. Uh, you know, it's got a scraper on it for scraping the bolts, um, you know, which I don't ever use. I doesn't, it's not needed. Um, but, you know, it has a knife on it. I don't like the fact that it has a serrated blade, but that's mm -hmm. the only way this mutt comes. I'm like you, I'm not a fan of serrations. Um, you know, but, you know, just another way to, to carry a blade. Um, you know, and then, and then we have a couple specialty knives here on the table. Um, one that I like, uh, this is a Rexford, uh, Rexford Knives Rut, R-U-T. Um, all this is is a small, lightweight, titanium um, razor blade. That's it. It's a razor blade holder, pretty much, you know. Um, I love this for cutting boxes, cutting cardboard, things like that. You don't have to dull your blade out. And mm -hmm. when it gets dull, you just throw it away, throw another, you know, 50, 75 cent blade in there. And it's 100% sharp again. It's got a bottle opener. You know, I've used it as a little pry bar before. Mm -hmm. You know, scraper, whatever. Opening paint cans, opening beers. You know, uh, but uh, you don't open beer with your teeth. Uh, I use my ring every now and then, hmm. but you know, those twist offs. You know, sometimes you you know you need help. Uh, but but yeah, just the the ability to to have a razor blade. It's nice. Um, you know and it doesn't dull out your, your main blade as much. Um, I also brought this. This is the second one that I have. That's why it's not as beat up as my other one. This is the Faithful. Um, this is for making, making kindling. Uh, Alan has positive and negatives to it. Um, I really like it. It's, it's well balanced. It's kind of the mixture of, what would you call this? A mixture it of- It looks like a fro. Yeah. That was sharpened. Yeah. Kind of is what I said. Yeah. Um, you know, Except a, for the handle is not on a 90, but. I would say like a elongated uh, uh, butcher's ax mm -hmm. a little bit. Possibly um, a fleshing tool, possibly yeah, a yeah. draw knife. <laughs> you could do some different um, stuff with it. They're pretty cool, you know, and I saw it and, and it was an Amazon impulse buy and I got it. I really, I started using it and I really liked it ever since. So I got another one, um, but it's great for kindling. If you're gonna baton, um, the, the wedge of it really works to split wood really well. So if you have, like I had a, I bought a box of fat wood the other day. Does, and, did that uh, come with a sheath? Uh, no, no sheath, no nothing, just. So you maybe have to get a piece and, of garden hose and yeah, put it on the edge and, and ranger band it on there. And I wanna say these are like 20 bucks, yeah. 25 bucks, nothing expensive, you know. Uh, Quality is decent. It's not something that you're going to hand down for generations, you know, but it'll do the job when you need it to. Um, but just great for, for making kindling. It's a specialty thing. You know, it's, it, it's not going to win an ax throwing contest. It's not going to be great at chopping down a tree, yeah. but for that one task, um, it works really, really well. Uh, so, so I've kind of, I've kind of liked that quite a bit. Um, anything else you want to add on, on blades? Well, the other one we've oh, got yes. laying out we haven't talked about is this little tiny neck knife. Would you consider this a specialty blade as well? Thing you do here. Maybe that, maybe a backup. You know, uh, some people love, hate neck knives or whatever, but this one is so light that once you put it on, you don't even know you have it. Right. And, you know, sometimes like in urban settings, it's good to be able to just reach between the buttons of your shirt and bam, your hands on the blade. You could be fake scratching your chest and actually you're positioning yourself to stab them in the neck yeah. instead of the ubiquitous, I'm reaching for my knife pose. But but I do kind of like this one. You can see it lays right there, mm -hmm. you know, slight tug and out you come. This is a Kanduru um, by Essie. Good old Essie. Yeah, it's... Um, a little paracord wrap, which is always nice. Yeah, you know, I... Uh, I, I was on a contract here a while back, and my buddy actually gave me this because I liked it. Uh, it's it's a little little small for me, but you know I've done a lot of things with it: friction fire, cleaned animals. Mm -hmm. I, I think of it more as a backup, you yeah. know, if I lose my my main blade. But that's that's tight little work for a blade. Yeah, yeah. I uh, carbon steel. 
I wasn't a huge fan of neck knives for a long time because mm -hmm. I, I don't technically like them tucked into my shirt, mm -hmm. beneath my shirt. And I felt like every time you bent over, it was always flopping yeah, in, like in with the way this of one, my face. Honestly, I, I'd only wear it openly like in the woods or something. Yeah. If, if I want something for concealment as a backup, I go with that just because the size is, they've got that figured out. It's, it's pretty light and you don't run into those issues. But I will say, I went out with a buddy of mine the other day and he made, it's kind of like what you use for binoculars and stuff. It's, it's mm. like an X-carry harness pretty much. So it yeah. has two outside loops that you put your arms through and then it becomes still a neck knife. Mm -hmm. But what it did was it allowed it so it wouldn't drift away from you so much, you know? Because mm. uh, I've always felt like with a neck knife, you're trying to start a fire and the kydex is flapping, you know, back and forwards. Yeah. It always drove me nuts. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, why, why didn't I ever think of that? It's just a simple, you know, uh, like a binocular harness, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it keeps it real nice, tight to the body. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a try. I'm gonna make one out of paracord when I get home. Um, Basically this one you got me thinking on, I may, I may add that to the list. Yeah. I, I like the fact that it's so light. Yeah. I mean, that thing- The bug out. It doesn't even feel awesome. real, it feels yeah. like a toy. Yeah, and, and the, the Benchmade bug out, it, every single person that I, to, I, I toss it to, they still think that it's, not real almost you know yeah. um but man we've we've beat the mess out of it so but then you get back to that trade-off like with any gear you know if it's really really light chances yep. are it's not as durable yep. like what they did to make this light is they made it less strong yep but you know what are you actually going to do with a knife of that size that it would need to be that robust yeah yeah, yeah. um there's times when that definitely would have an application so, so yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of, that's it. I mean, you got anything else you want to add to anything anybody should look for? Three favorite brands of knives. I'll throw you on the spot right now. Benchmade, yep. Mora, Tops. All right, I'm gonna say Benchmade, uh, Emerson, and I'm gonna go Mora, Mora yep. as well. Um, I, 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 value wise, Mora is, yeah. It's hard to beat. Those, I think, um, I think the Bushcraft Black is somewhere in the vicinity of uh, 50-ish mm -hmm. dollars. I've carried that thing for years yep. and years and years, and I've used it so many times. You know, like when I'm out in the woods teaching a class for a week or whatever, I'm every day, all day using this thing. And it's probably the most comfortable, the most usable knife there is for mm -hmm. most things, you know, uh, as far as knives that size. Yeah. You know, for a folder, out of all the folders I've carried, and I have carried plenty, uh, right now I'm at the, the Benchmade Griptilian as just every day. And, and I like Spydercos also. Uh, I used I to, any, I know. used to, but I broke one. You know, their locking mechanism yeah. is not in the same class as the Axis lock that, uh, that Benchmade has. It just won't hold up to some of that heavier stuff. All right, and then and then just so we can feed the trolls here a little bit, one mm -hmm. knife you don't like. One knife that I don't like. Um, yeah, you the, gotta hurt feelings. Here. Okay, you, know, you gotta hurt right. feelings. Go for it. Okay, uh, I'll throw two of them out there. Okay. One, one is the K bar. I see a lot of people showing up to class wearing a K bar, and I'm I'm like, no. Nah. I mean, I get it. I get the nostalgia. You know, my granddad carried one on Iwo Jima. It's, it's kind of like the 1911 for me. It's Americana, it's nostalgic, and it's, I can hear all the Marines but out there right now. You son of a bitch. But, uh, you know, I've broken a couple of K bars. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not, we, we've gotten better at knives since then. Uh, also, the, the cross guard on it, there's some things that that gets in the way of, and it's just, I mean, it's great for, for what it is and what it yeah. was meant to do and designed for, but for me, I, I generally won't carry one anymore. I've had a few over the years. Um, the wooden handles on them usually. Well, they're, they're like they're a- They're plastic. Like a, it depends which model yeah. you get. Yeah. Some of them are leather. Yeah. The, the modern ones, I think, are a stronger knife, but, and, and then they were uh, the combination serrated edge yeah. and all of that. I mean, it's a good combat, emphasis on combat utility knife but for a lot of the stuff that i do it's just not as comfortable and it doesn't perform the task as well so for that reason right. i generally shy away from the um, from the k bars i'll agree with you on that one I'll um, agree with you on that the one. other thing i know a lot of people out there and i used to be a cold steel devotee uh -huh. i was like i was all about it but things change companies change times change 
And cold steel of today is not what cold steel once was. Not trying to poo poo the company. I'm just speaking from my own experience. Right. I've broken two kukris, which I suspect was due to quality Blade. control. Yes. Quality control and tempering issues is what I can suspect. And I met the, the owner of the company, super nice guy, and he even gave me an knife to replace the one that I told him I'd broke the first one, and then that one broke. So with that in the back of my mind, doing the types of stuff I do in different parts of the world, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't have that in the back of my mm -hmm. mind, like, oh, this knife may snap. So that's why that guy, you know, I don't, I don't have any questions in my mind with this or something like that. You know, maybe they fix it, maybe they don't. Sure. You know, I think they had good runs. I think they had bad runs. So uh, there's still some cold steel products I love. I'm not saying, you know, blanket, they're bad, cold steel's bad. I'm saying the Kukri, which I initially fell in love with, has changed. One was a 01, the other one I think was a SK5. So it was two different types of steel that I broke under normal use. And so I think the, the tempering and quality control probably isn't what it used to be. I still love their SRK as mm -hmm. just a general purpose knife. Their Spetsnaz shovel, I have one in the car right now. You know, they, they do still have some, some products that are, that are good, um, like the Cold Steel Bushman, I think is a pretty good concept, especially in areas where you might legitimately need a spear like Africa. Right. I think you should have a Cold Steel Bushman. But you know, as far as the Kukri's, after the second failure, I was kind of like, oh, okay. So then I, you know, have to move on to other, other stuff. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, your knife is your life. Uh, you know, a knifeless man is a lifeless man. And I do not choose my knives lightly. It's probably one of the most important choices I make regarding a material possession or a purchase. Because I, I fully anticipate being out there and this being my primary tool to sustain my life and the lives of other people. And that's kind of the purpose of this video. You know, I just wanted to throw some things out yeah. there for people to consider. And I don't own stock in any company. This is just actually what I'm carrying. And we didn't get anything for free. No, here. I bought every yeah, one we, of these we've things. bought every single blade on this table. Um, it's, it's just things to consider. You know, they've all got their pros and their cons. Some mm -hmm. of them are... Uh, a matter of opinion. Other things in my mind is a definite hard rule. Like I don't want a combination edge where it's half serrated, half straight. I don't want that. I don't really like locking mechanisms on there. You know, um, Benchmade, yeah, got a lot of good things going for them. The one critique I would say about this is that the edge retention is not quite as optimal as maybe it could be with this particular one. I find that I have to touch the edge up a little bit. So if I had a negative thing to say, uh, it, it maybe would be that. I don't really have any critique about the Mora except their, their sheath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like we went, like we said before, you know, most designers don't put as much thought into the sheath for whatever reason. Yeah. So I find that I, I often have to go get a sheath made. They make an awesome knife. It, it'd be like getting a, getting a uh, Ferrari and going to get your tires at Walmart. It's kind of that same yeah. mentality. You know, if you're going to build a Cadillac knife, build a Cadillac sheath to go with it. Yeah. And guys, we just kind of wanted to bring you along here. I mean, Alan and I, we talk about new things that we get and, you know, things we've done and used and broken and all the time. So we thought we'd kind of bring you along here. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, anything like that, feel free to, to drop them down. We'll definitely answer them. Um, you know, hope you enjoyed. You'll you probably know, answer them. I'm see, yeah, not I'll, really I'll on answer the phone them. Um, you know, I, I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, sitting down with us for just a little bit and going over this. I hope you have a fantastic day. And until next time, be safe.